Okay, thanks Simon. Um, hope everyone can hear. And there's my first slide. Okay, um, th the titles kind of um, changed over the, the last uh, couple of months, actually. Um, and it, I'm treating it as a very kind of open and uh, all-encompassing kind of title as Teacher Professional Development in the Use of Open Educational Resources. So what I thought I'd do is um, I'll tell you a bit more about myself. Um, move on to the next slide. As a way of introduction, I'll introduce myself and my background, and then I can explain how my project has developed and, uh, and actually how I came up with my project theme and the format. OK, so I'm hoping you can see the slide there with the happy chappy on the left. Um, that's actually me uh, last June with my graduating class behind me. That's in um, the Ulink College of Shanghai, uh, very um, uh, educated, very academic school. Um, just to give you an example, out of 200 students we had there, um, 18 found places at Oxbridge this year. So. Um, it, it was our flagship college of a, a group of colleges in, in China, and I was their director of education. But most of my career I've spent outside of the UK. I'm originally from Wales. I'm in Wales this evening. But most of my adult life, I've been working in Europe, Africa, the Middle East and the Far East. And most of the time I spent in IB schools. Um, around about 15 years ago i got the chance to set up a company with some colleagues called AAA learning and we we use moodle hence the the logo there to to provide um, online professional development courses for international teachers so um in fact a few years later around about 2013 the international baccalaureate they bought our intellectual property offers and we went away very happy and they they now run their own courses so so that's my my background um in an educational sense um international teachers um and then when i came on this course and found uh, open educational resources they i'd heard of them before but they were pretty new to me and and the scope i could not believe the uh, the, the scope that i was seeing there um they offered some solutions to some problems that international schools have, particularly in cost. Now that was a, that was a large, potentially huge savings in, in textbook fees, for example. Normally the schools would buy the textbooks, would ship them from the UK to whichever country we were in, and the students would then buy the books or they would be added onto the school fees. Um, another aspect of this was accessibility not just making the curriculum more accessible to students, but making uh, materials more accessible to teachers. For example, many of the uh, uh, books and, and other uh, items that we'd ordered would often be held up at the border. There would be some uh, at customs, there would be some questions asked about what we wanted, why we want this stuff, and the, the suitability of certain tests and so on. But by, by having open educational resources, this actually cut that out completely. The next three, professional development, collegiate attitudes, and a kind of broader outlook, I, I thought were really interesting things to bring to um, a faculty, but in, in a school, particularly those where they weren't used to sharing. It would be something we could point to and say, look, people out there are happy to share. You know, why can't we start that in school? So um, I, I thought those were certainly worthy of exploration. And um, finally, looking at our STEM lessons of those 18 students who went to Oxbridge, um, they're mostly doing mathematics, engineering or, or physics. We were pretty strong on, on STEM, but we needed more resources. You know, there, there's no reason why 18 shouldn't be like 28 or 38 students. It's, it's possible. So, um, the more I, f I found out about um, OERs, I realized there were some issues surrounding the use of them, um, particularly as Martin Weller said on the Saturday session that really they, they didn't take off. Um, I thought it was because we, some people didn't simply know about them. Well, of course they did, but um, many people knew about them, many people have been using them, but there were some issues, particularly issues of, of quality. Uh, it was difficult to tell from any of the metadata and you had to put a lot of metadata in there when you're submitting uh, a resource for it to uh, for anyone to, to know what it was or what it was suitable for. 
the, the sheer volume of uh, these resources, there's so many of them, it took a long time to process and, and to find out what you were looking for. And again, a lot of resources that I've been looking at have been more geared towards higher education and not maybe the primary school level or um, you know, lower secondary level. There was also an issue that, uh, and, and many researchers had seen this, particularly Katie Clements uh, reckons that they've open, um, open educational resource repositories had failed. Well, I, I'm not so sure. I, I, I don't believe that. I think other researchers don't necessarily believe that they failed. It's just that uh, we just haven't had time yet. But one of the things that we uh, we should be aware of is a lot of teachers don't want to use other people's. They, they, they have a kind of professional pride in their own resources. And finally, and, and of course all these are linked, is, well, if it's free, is it any good? You know, if I'm sending a student home with free resources, maybe their parents have got some questions about, well, why are we using free stuff? You know, what, we're paying fees, why don't we buy some good stuff? So lots and lots of issues there. So um, my plan then uh, really was um, looking at um, open educational resources and, and putting this out there to the K-12, the primary and secondary school teachers on the international circuit. Okay, so, um, sorry, I've got a timer gone off somewhere. Okay, um, my, my question to myself was, how am I gonna do this? And the obvious answer was to me was Moodle. Well, um, there's a Moodle Cloud allows you now to make your own Moodle, um, up to 50 people on it at any one time. I have a background in Moodle. I used to be on the UK uh, Moodle Moot Steering Committee um, quite, quite a while ago. Um, and so for, for me, it's my first choice. And my next slide shows uh, a course outline that I put together. So I got a free Moodle Cloud account. I've started to build my own course. And um, here we are, I've got welcome to the course in orange there. You can see I've got four modules, background to OER, looking at and looking for them, adopting, adapting, recycling. And the last one was about issues. And I would hope that with this one, we can start to unpick some of those questions that I had about um, quality, time and, and so on. And even encouraging people maybe to start their own uh, repository. So then I thought to myself, well, OK, I know how I'm going to do it. I've started to build a course, but who? Who will I include? Now, um, I recently joined with Twitter, and I'm, I'm, I'm finding that, that that's useful in some spheres. But my kind of own network over the years has been built up on uh, LinkedIn. I have uh, around about 1,300 followers on LinkedIn, and I follow many other people as well. So I put, I put some questions up there on um, on LinkedIn, and I'll enlarge that um, screen for you now to show. And I'm saying we're, we're having a look at OER or OE practices, and do people have a, a repositories that they prefer to go to? And I had some interesting answers, actually. I had, uh, the guy there, I blocked out his name to protect the innocent. He's a, a principal of a school in India. I knew he would. He's from Wales like me. He, he, he does this kind of stuff all the time. And the other person who responded in that way was Sean, who was one of the first graduates from H818 many, many years ago, uh, now living in East Africa, working on an OER project with the university in Dar es Salaam. So um, those people said, yes, we do, but many others didn't actually. And that number, uh, I've only had a few comments on that one, but, but since then, many other people have joined in and said, don't know what you're talking about. So I thought, well, who else is there? Who else might be somebody to ask? So I went to a, uh, a group on Facebook, strangely enough, an international group on Facebook. They're IB teachers, and they, uh, this is the Approaches to Teaching and Learning, ATL group. And I asked them a kind of similar question, although what I did there was I gave them a, a poll, and I'll enlarge that screen so you can see it. So I said, give me a love symbol, not a like, give me a love if you consistently use OERs, give me a ha ha if you don't know what they are, um, if you know what they are but you don't use them, and give me a sad if you've never used them. 
Well, um, since that, um, many others have responded. And I would say around about 70% of people are giving me, well, I wanted the sad face, but actually some people misunderstood and wrote the word sad. Never mind. Um, it's fine. And, but quite a few said, Tim, I would like to know more about it. What is it? What are they? So, so there we are. I thought to myself, okay, that's good. We've got, we've got something. Some people want to know some stuff. And my screen's disappeared. You're just over the 10 minutes, Tim, so you need to be wrapping up. Okay, wrapping up. Okay. Thanks, Simon. Um, so uh, next one, I looked at another group. Um, here's another one. I found out in a poll that there are actually, uh, that there is a poll feature on um, on Facebook. So I used the poll there. Many people, again, many people didn't know what they were. Okay, so quick update then. Here, this is where I am now. Um, I had a thought, is Moodle the right thing or something else? I did think about Twitter, use Twitter to run a course or Facebook to run a course. And as you can see, the bullet points in Facebook are actually outweighing those in uh, Twitter. There is a course function in groups in Facebook. And here, this I think is my final um, slides. My current situation is I've set up a open educational resources group on Facebook. Um, it's got uh, opportunities there for to invite members. I'm the only member at the moment, but then I can build the units and build the discussions and build all the activities around that. Okay. So, sorry, I'd run over. It's all right. There's my reference list. And um, if there's any, that's all folks, unless there's any questions. I saw some in Thank there. you, Tim. Uh, can we have a round of applause for Tim, please? Yes, there, there were uh, quite a few questions uh, going through. Uh, a lot of questions and comments around uh, the subject of customizing the OERs. Did, did you find you needed to customize them for your students? And do, does the, the time input to that process make them less appealing as a, as a thing to use? Yes, that, that's absolutely right. That, that is one of the, the key critical factors, I think, that if you're teaching at the higher end of secondary school, that there's stuff that's out there that's probably more usable than if you were teaching in, say, early primary school. Um, so, yeah, let's say middle school, um, key stage uh, three, key stage two, key stage three courses, they probably needed some work to, you know, to make them adapt for your classroom. Um, but at the higher end, they could you could just take it and use it, and they were, they were pretty good. Okay, so uh, at least uh, there's a, a time saving on average, if not perhaps uh, as much as, as people might think. Um, you you've done some really interesting networking there on LinkedIn and, and Facebook. What lessons have you learned from from engaging other professionals on those platforms that you could share with everyone? Yeah, that's a great question because, um, you know, during the module, of course, we're, we're um, encouraged to set up a, a Twitter account. Um, but I think the, the international school scene and the, the circuit that, that we, I was on and no longer on um, are using completely different things. Um, I didn't believe, for example, that there would be uh, groups with Facebook because in China, there's a the huge firewall there um, stops access to Twitter, Google, anything Google, uh, Facebook and so on. But as I found out, many um, teachers in China are using um, uh, VPLs and you can actually then reach out and, you know, into the, the World Wide Web and um, access ma materials that way. Uh -huh. You know, things like Instagram are, are actually banned in China, but they can be used. So, um, but what I did find, and I think what um, Viv was talking about earlier, is that there are, there are networks out there that you just have to look for. What are they using now? You know, mm. What are people using now? And, and certainly LinkedIn in international education is a big thing. 
Excellent. I mean, you, you, you've obviously found a, a channel that's, uh, that's valuable to, to mine and you've got some really interesting stuff there. I'm afraid we're out of time for questions uh, already because you, you run over a little bit with the, the presentation. Uh, so that's, uh, that's us. Can, can we have another round of applause for Tim, please? Thank you, Tim. Another really interesting presentation and uh, great answers again. You, you've uh, obviously got some really useful insights there into that, that particular area. But we need to change tack again. 